Uh, morning, everyone. I'm sorry for <laughs> letting you waiting so long because my computer was stuck. <laughs> uh, welcome to this session. And in this session, I would, I would like to uh, tell you something about how can placement help you to achieve. Uh, I, I'd rather change the title to more customized <laughs> scheduling by integrates uh, with different services. And uh, uh, I can also see some key contributors to the placement service and uh, please uh, point out if I write something wrong so that we don't send uh, wrong messages to the audience. And uh, uh, I will also share some example with current implementations in NOAA, Neutron, and Cyborg. And uh, this can be expanded to any other similar services uh, if you want to uh, use placement. And uh, first, please let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Zhen Yu Zheng, and uh, I'm a, a software engineer, engineer from Huawei, and I have been contributing to OpenStack for several releases. And uh, below are my two colleagues. And sadly, due to some uh, last minute arrangement change, they cannot join us here today. So I will be the only one talking here. And. Uh, uh, let's have a preview of what we are going to cover uh, in this session today. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, we will have a brief introduction about uh, what is placement and why do we need it, and together with some uh, mass known concepts about placement. Uh, then we will have a look at the uh, most important use case currently uh, about placement. Uh, is how NOAA uses placement and uh, uh, what the problem did it solve. And after that, we will have a quick peek at some ongoing implementations about how uh, we use placements with uh, uh, other services to interact with NOAA for some more custom customized uh, 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 scheduling process. And uh, uh, then, uh, so uh, uh, anyone else wants similar uh, features can uh, like see how it works and do it your uh, own uh, implementation. And finally, we will briefly introduce uh, what the team is working on in the current release and what kind of interesting features uh, can users expect it for Stein. So uh, let's start the first topic. It's the placement in a nutshell. Uh, let's have a little bit of the placement history as the start. Uh, placement is introduced in Newton, and uh, it first come up with uh, as a part of NOAA. And the goal is to enable more efficient accounting of resources in um, placement deployments and uh, uh, to achieve a better scheduling of virus entities in the cloud. And it is a separate RESTful API stack and the data model used to track resource provider and the inventory of uh, and usages. Uh, it also has some uh, different classes of uh, resources. Uh, as we have just released the Rocky release, so placement has been already gone through four releases, and uh, our contributors have uh, added a lot of wonderful features uh, in the past releases. Uh, this made the placement much more powerful and easier to use. Uh, here I just highlighted some uh, like highlight features and uh, uh, I have uh, added the list uh, in the reference. So if anyone interested, you can check. And for example, we are allowing users to define custom resource classes uh, uh, start from Okata, and this makes user easy to use the uh, placement service uh, to their own projects as they can easily model their uh, own resources as some um, custom resource classes uh, in placement. And in PAC, we added this uh, trace API and uh, we later allow user to uh, query resource providers by trace in Queens. And this again gives uh, very much more convenience to user 
when modeling their own resource providers. Uh, we will cover the concept of trees later in this session. And uh, in the last release, Rocky, uh, we, uh, the concept of aggregates uh, was added. And if you are familiar with uh, Nova, then you must know that uh, it is a group of resource providers, so uh, with, uh, it has, it them may have some similar features, and user can set up aggregates and query allocation analysis by aggregates um, to so have some more customized uh, scheduling process. And uh, with the growing of a maturity, uh, more and more projects start to consider adopt placements as their resource management service. Uh, such as Newton, and we will give an example about it. And Cinder, I heard from the forum yesterday that uh, they will uh, consider to use this to uh, modelize some um, uh, shared storage thing. And Blazor, I know they are working on some features. And also Cyborg is planning to use placement to interact with uh, Nova. I will cover the neutron and cyborg as an example later in this session, and as they are the very first project interact with NOVA using placement and have uh, more clear roadmaps comparing to others. And, uh, and some of you guys may know that uh, placement is now going through some extractions. And there will be a forum about this in the afternoon. So if you are interested, you can go there and find out what's going on. And uh, before we go any further, I would like to point out that uh, although placement have a simple architecture and a very clear design, and there are still tons of details co to cover if you want to fully understand it. And uh, uh, in this topic, I will only focus on the high level uh, re resource abstractions and workflows. And uh, by understanding this, uh, you will at least know what things you should do if you want to adopt placement as your uh, resource management service. And uh, then you can get to more uh, detailed reference about the specific parts uh, that you have problem with. Uh, for example, uh, Eric and uh, Ed have some uh, good sessions in Vancouver about the implementation details of placement, and they come up with a very interesting example that uh, user will be, uh, you can easy, very easily understand what's going on, and the link is uh, below. Okay, uh, 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 let's have a look at the placement architecture. As I just mentioned, uh, it is the architecture itself is very simple and uh, uh, as, I can, as we show in the graph on the right, uh, it is a, a whiskey application that sends and receives JSON requests and a relational database uh, data for data persistence is just this simple. And uh, as the state is managed solely in the database, uh, scaling placement is simply done by increasing the number of uh, whisking application instances and uh, scaling the database using traditional database uh, scaling techniques is easy and efficient. And here is a very good example about how to scale the placement in real deployments. Uh, this is an example uh, deployments uh, CERN shared at the uh, Vancouver summit, and uh, placement is developed together with the uh, deployed together with Sales V2 architecture. And as we can see from the graph on the left, uh, they have deployed over our 16 placement services across uh, 70 cells. And uh, they have 200 compute nodes for uh, each cell, so it's over our 14,000 compute nodes in one region. And that's really pretty, pretty huge, and it's uh, also showed that placement can uh, serve this kind of uh, large departments. Uh, if you are interested in, in more details about this example, uh, you can go to reference two for more details. I added the link uh, at the end of this file, and uh, uh, yesterday they just shared some of their new uh, upgrades to the deployments, and if you are interested, you can also check the videos from yesterday. 
And uh, now let me introduce some important concepts of placement. And they are very critical to, for, to understanding the placement. And uh, if I made some mistake here, please point out so uh, we don't send out uh, wrong messages to the audience. Uh, uh, first one is play, uh, result providers. It's just an abstraction of data model to representing the object that uh, provides certain type or number of resources tracked by the placement service. Uh, such as a compute node or storage pool. Uh, this is a very, bas uh, very basic concept for the uh, placement, Every, uh, the main resource is the resource provider. And we also have resource classes. Uh, it's the type of resource uh, that uh, we are, the resource provider can provide. We have uh, standard resource providers, uh, standard resource classes, such as uh, disk GB, memory MB, and vCPU. Those are hard coded into the code. And uh, as I mentioned before, user can now uh, set their own custom, uh, custom resource cl uh, classes. Uh, it will be prefixed with this custom uh, underscore. And another important thing is the inventory. Uh, as the, I blo uh, as I see in the board, it's a, a quantity of the different resource classes that each resource provider can provide. For example, resource provider one has 100 units of disk GB and 2048 uh, units of memory MB and eight vCPUs. Uh, and this is the quantity. Uh, resources, and we also have this newly added trace. It describes the qualitative aspect of the resource providers. For example, uh, in the previous uh, example, we will have 100 disk GB, but we, want, we might want to uh, describe that this 100 this uh, gigabytes disk is solid disk drive, so we can set the SSD trace to resource provider one to indicate that this uh, compute nodes provides uh, SSD uh, disk. And when you want your instance to have this kind of feature, you just uh, set it in a request, and the scheduler will schedule your uh, instance to the host that has this kind of feature. And uh, moving on, it's the, it's the consumer, it's the user who occupy the resources from the resource providers. Uh, for example, an instance is a consumer for resource provider one, and uh, it consumes 10 disk GB and 1024 1, memory MB and four CPUs. And uh, another one is the location. It's the model that we used to store the resource occupation relationship between the resource providers and consumers. A typical allocation rec records will be like consumer one occupied four units of resource one and from resource provider one. And uh, another thing is the allocation candidates. It's the placement will provide a group of resource providers that are suitable for, uh, for your request, and they are called the allocation candidates. And the caller, uh, like NOAA and other services, may uh, use these uh, candidates uh, as their input of the uh, as their input of the filter and sort process as NOAA has, and they can then select the best candidates uh, they think it is. And uh, the last one I have is the most important, but also uh, a little bit complicated uh, concept. Now in NOAA, it's the uh, nested resource providers. And in Okata release, we added this uh, to uh, let uh, user to be able to assign a hierarchical relationships between resource providers. Uh, this could be very important for users to represent resources like NUMA nodes and uh, SROV NetWiz. Uh, I, I have a graph on the right uh, which gives a simple example of the nested resource providers and uh, 
uh, as we can see in the top, we have a, a root result pointer, and we use this parent and root field to indicate the hierarchical relationship between the result providers. And we can see the top one has a, a ID with zero, and it stands for the uh, root result computer node result provider, and it has like 100 disk GB inventories, and I had a uh, SSD trace marked, and it has two children uh, with ID1 and uh, ID2. Each re represent a NUMA cell, and it has. You can see the parent is zero, and the root is also zero. And these two uh, NUMA cells also have children. They will with ID3 and ID4, and uh, we can see the uh, result provider ID3. We have a parent is one, which means its parent is one, and the root is zero, which means the uh, root node is zero, and we can use this field to indicate the tree architecture. And uh, uh, this is actually very good as it uh, perfectly reflects the uh, it perfectly reflects the physical architecture of the compute node, so uh, user can use this kind of structure to achieve uh, more uh, uh, better uh, scheduling. And now, uh, after knowing the basic concepts, we are I think we are going to go to the uh, how placements, uh, how Nova uses placement, and what kind of problem did it solve. Uh, uh, let me start with the, uh, what kind of problem uh, did we have in NOAA before we uh, have placement. The first one is the incorrect resource usage reporting. Uh, due to legacy reasons, NOAA considered resources are being reported by compute nodes, uh, uh, but only by compute nodes. And when reporting, NOAA calculates the resource usages and availability by simply summing across uh, all the compute nodes in the database. Uh, this causes some problems. Uh, for example, uh, if some of my compute nodes uses shared storage for uh, availability reasons, what I mean here is that uh, not that instances using uh, Cinder and some storage pool backend as, as the uh, instance volume. What I mean here is the compute node itself also uses some uh, storage pools to uh, for their storage uh, for their local disk. So when uh, the instance created by image will be using this uh, kind of storage shared storage. And uh, uh, for example, if we have 10 compute nodes and we connect it to a pool that has only one gigabytes of uh, free disk, and as uh, each of our 10 compute nodes will see that uh, it has one free uh, disk, and when reporting, uh, each of them will report they have one uh, gigabytes of disk. So overall, the user will see it has 10 uh, gigabytes of disk, but uh, it is wrong because, in fact, we have only one gigabytes of uh, disk uh, before the uh, before placement ha came. And the second one is a large scale placement uh, problem. When scheduling, a uh, normal scheduler will retrieve a list of all compute nodes in the entire deployment and it will loop through them across all filters uh, enabled in the, place, uh, in the deployment. Uh, it is extremely wasteful and its uh, in inefficiency gets worse uh, in, uh, with the larger deployments. And uh, the other one is the cross-project scheduling. Uh, it was very hard to leverage NOAA scheduling and I had to say some other uh, customized scheduling features by other services like uh, rooted network functionality by Neutron. At the same time, it, to achieve more uh, one scheduling process uh, using a more generic resource management services across all OpenStack services will make this much easier. And uh, let's get to the workflow details. Uh, in order to use placements, there are a few steps uh, to follow. And uh, the first step is to model your resource classes 
to the placement service and then to make your result provider report these inventories about the results classes. As we are using uh, NOAA Compute Node as an uh, example, and the, uh, the resource classes report by NOAA Compute Node is currently our standard resource classes. So we will skip the resource class modeling part and jump to the uh, report part directly. Uh, in order to report the uh, resource inventories to placement, uh, logic was cited in the resource tracker. Uh, uh, it is uh, a component f uh, in for NOAA Compute that collects and uh, uh, periodically report them to the scheduler, or in this case, it will report to uh, placement as well. And uh, the, we added a logic to make it report to placement about the available resources and uh, uh, Currently, we only report vCPU, disk GB, memory MB, and vGPU. And uh, we also started to report some uh, CPU features as traits from last release. And uh, uh, this could be very useful too. And if you are interested, you can go to the uh, reference tree for some de more details. And as mentioned, uh, the report process will be running periodically or whenever we perform an action that can trigger resource changes, like uh, instance creation, deletion, and migration. And uh, it's, it's, it's simply by, done by uh, calling this put request uh, to placement. Uh, for example, uh, our resource provider have uh, 16 uh, uh, v CPUs uh, as inventories, and uh, I also want to point out that uh, you can see this resource provider generation here is 66. This is added by uh, in order to avoid risk condition, and uh, 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 we will uh, placement will check this version to see uh, if any anywhere else has updated it, and if it's uh, not if it does not match, uh, we will have to uh, try again. And uh, uh, for more uh, details about this, I suggest you to watch the Vancouver video I mentioned before. It has some more detailed information about this field. And uh, after we have reported our results to placement, the next step is to make our scheduling process use these uh, resources, red records. Uh, uh, the, in NOAA case, NOAA scheduler will gather all the scheduling-related parameters, such as vCPU, memory MB, and disk for user request, from user request. And also, user may specify some special uh, special needs about uh, using placement, uh, using flavor extras back and image properties. Uh, this will be translated to resource provider traits if you are using placement. After we gather all the uh, information, NOAA will call placement using uh, this kind of uh, requests. Uh, as we can see from the example, we will want to uh, query a uh, resource uh, allocation candidates that has one vCPU and uh, 1,024 uh, memory uh, megabytes of memory and uh, 100 gigabytes of uh, disk. And uh, in this example, I added this required equals to SSD to indicate that uh, uh, we have we want to our instance to use uh, SSD host and. Uh, uh, another thing I want to point out that uh, placement uses micro version to control the API changes. And for this kind of uh, request, you have to specify the OpenStack slash API slash version placement equal to 1.10 to um, make it success call. And uh, after this kind of request, we will have a response like this. Uh, the font is smaller, but uh, the, rec the response is long, and I want to show the original thing to avoid misunderstanding. And uh, as we can see, uh, actually, this uh, request is also for Mac version 
1.10, I guess. And so uh, if you are using different macros, then the response might be different. As we can see, uh, we will have a provider summaries field in this response dict, and it will be keyed by the resource provider uh, or allocation candidate UUIDs, and uh, we will have, for in this example, we will have uh, our resource provider have this kind of trees, and we will have a capacity of 256 uh, vCPUs, and six of them are used, and uh, such uh, like this. And we will also see our what kind of request did we make in the allocation request field. And uh, after getting response from the placement, we can now uh, go through, uh, you know, in NOAA case, we will go through our original filter and wait uh, process and to select the best host for our instance creation. And another thing to point out that uh, we, have a uh, we have a resource claim process in NOAA, and we it was done in NOAA Compute before. Uh, uh, because to, in order to avoid uh, risk conditions uh, for the scheduling process. And now when we're using placement, we have shifted uh, the claim process to an earlier state uh, by calling this put uh, request to placement. And uh, together with the, all the claiming resources as its request body. Uh, this way, we maintain the only source of the resource, and we can avoid conflicts in the uh, scheduling process, even when we are using multiple schedulers. Uh, and another thing I want to point out that in current NOAA, as cell v2 is used by scheduling, and it can only work within one cell. The, the rescheduling process can only work in one cell. So the scheduler will select a best host, and then it will select some alternatives from the same cell with the best host. And uh, uh, even though placements have helped uh, a lot in the large scale problems, and we still meet, uh, have faced some uh, uh, challenges and bugs. Uh, for example, uh, if we are using a very large and sparse cloud, for example, 1,000 empty compute nodes for very fresh deployments, a request with very small instances or just very normal instances. I mean that uh, we don't want any special features. We just want CPU, RAM, and disk. And this uh, request will return uh, always return like t all the compute nodes in the records because uh, everyone can fulfill this kind of request. And uh, uh, this uh, has uh, implication of memory and performance on both uh, placement and uh, NOAA scheduler. So in order to solve this, uh, two configure options are added in Queens. Uh, the, max, the first one is the, under the scheduler sector, section is the max placement resource. Uh, it just simply adds a limit to the placement call by uh, scheduler. Uh, that, uh, another one is under placement sector is the randomized allocation candidates. Uh, config option is equal to false, and with this one, uh, uh, why do we add this one? It's because uh, if you are limiting your resources, uh, your responses, uh, what you, you, it might end up with that you always got the first first 1,000 records by default thought, uh, and this is prob problematic. And so we would like to, run, to return randomized uh, uh, response uh, using this kind of uh, config option. And also in Rocky, uh, a pre-placement filter functionality is added, and uh, it will be uh, function, the function will work in the early phase of scheduling process, and the user can get improved overall scheduling process. Uh, currently, it supports filter resource providers aggregates by project ID and uh, availability zone. And uh, 
Uh, this method helps, uh, the, the other mentioned method helps a lot in improving on the overall performance in real life deployments. Uh, you can consider using a similar process in your own projects if you want to adopt placement. Uh, so uh, let's go through some more generic use case about uh, placements to interact with NOVA. And I will just uh, simply introduce some uh, NOVA Neutron and NOVA Cyborg interaction. Uh, the first example is NOVA Neutron. Uh, the goal is of this particular case is a feature people wanted for a very long period of time. Uh, we want to be able to schedule in instances based on the uh, network bandwidth available in the uh, compute node. Uh, after a very long time design the Im implementation, I have to say that it is now in uh, good hands and it is in the final step of implementation and uh, I think we can have it in, in this cycle. And uh, let's have a look at how it works. Uh, the feature is actually used uh, the result, nested result provider architect, architecture. So the first step is NOVA creates the root result provider of the compute nodes uh, resource provider tree. And then Neutron will be in charge of creating the network resource provider tree of the compute node under the no, uh, compute node root resource provider and uh, reports the bandwidth inventories. And when creating instances with bandwidth requirements, Neutron will also provide the resource request uh, as a, uh, a part of the port uh, in Neutron MPI. And NOVA then will take the port resource uh, request included in the uh, get uh, request to placement. And uh, uh, then as a normal scheduling process, NOVA will select the uh, placement with then re re response the uh, suitable allocation candidates. And then uh, as the normal scheduling process, NOVA will select the best host and its alternative from the allocation candidates returned by placement and uh, claim the resource allocations. And last thing, NOVA will also pass the allocation information to Neutron during the port binding process. And we will then bind the port. And uh, let's have another look at uh, a Cyborg example. And as mentioned in yesterday's keynote, Cyborg is an OpenStack project that aims to provide a general management framework for acceleration resources, uh, such as FPGA, ASIC, and GPU. Uh, is that where it was launched in Pike and, and growing fast. And for more information of the project, you can do, go to the following, uh, the reference five. And here I'm just introducing how it's planned to interact with NOAA. Uh, for the current most common use cases at present, uh, the acceleration resources will be attached to instances as a device for users. Uh, thus, we need to uh, NOAA and Cyborg to provide a joint scheduling process to make this work. So uh, the best way they can find is to going through uh, placement. Let's see how it works. Uh, it's as usual. Uh, Cyborg will be in charge of discovery and managing the accelerator resources and uh, abstract them as a resource classes in placement. Uh, then, like Neutron, Cyborg will uh, have to report the accelerator resources as a child resource provider or some inventory of a compute node resource providers. Uh, then the user will have to specify their accelerator requests in flavor extra spec or image properties to when they are booting the instance. And NOAA will then uh, use uh, this uh, special request to placement query parameters and then get the allocation candidates. Uh, for this particular use case, we will add a new OS ACC library that can be used for attaching and detaching those devices to the instance. Uh, this is like the OS break and OS V flips. Uh, as we can see from the above two mentioned examples, uh, you can see that even though the details behind the placement 
uh, concepts like nested resource providers and other uh, placement implementation details is complicated, but when you try to use it, it's actually not that hard. Uh, you just model your specific resource types as uh, custom resource uh, classes and report it as an uh, inventory or child of the existing resource providers and then query it during the scheduling process, then you are good to go. So I'd say uh, our developers have done a very good job by making it simple to use for the users and uh, don't be, um, wor don't worry if you uh, the current workflow does not suit your use case. I think you can ask, ask them in RRC or mail list. I believe the, those brilliant engineers will be able to figure out a solution for you. And speaking of our uh, brilliant developers, let's have a look uh, on what they are working on in this release and uh, what can we expect it for the starting release. Uh, first, placement is going through extraction and you might have, end up with a separate project after this release. You can get details for this in the forum in this afternoon. And the second one is that I used as an example to illustrate the nested resource providers, a new topology with resource providers. By having this, we will be able to accurately model uh, the physical architecture of our uh, computer host and uh, achieve a better scheduling. Uh, the third one is the Neutron example. As I just mentioned, it's now in good hands and at the final stage of implementation, and we will likely have it in this cycle. And the last two uh, could be very interesting for developers who want to integrate the placements in their own projects. Uh, the one is to support using this any syntax when querying resource provider with trees, and the other one is to allow filtering by forbidden aggregates, meaning user can use this exclusion mark, uh, member of syntax in the query to illustrate that we want candidates that are not member of any uh, specified group. And I uh, have added all the design details about those features in the reference list, and if you are interested in those, you can go uh, to the specific specs for details. And these are all the reference. And uh, that's all what, what I got here. So thank you. So any questions? Excellent presentation. And uh, definitely you people have brought uh, in four releases something really valuable for the service providers. Now. Uh, one question to you is on the database model that you are using, and uh, what is uh, how is it going to be? Is it an operational database, and how is it different from NOAA? Plus, since you are also bringing the hierarchical inventory from different uh, modules, how will the migration? Uh, what do you think of migration, and what impact? will be there in the next release, let's say Stein to uh, Train or Rocky to uh, Stein. Any comment will, that will be helpful or any pointers will be helpful. I think. <laughs> oh, the, when you do a, not data migration, when you do a upgrade, there is none? Normal upgrade, you mean the, can you explain what do you mean by normal life? I'm, Trying to understand. Okay, so you don't see any impact of this on the uh, production environments if we do some upgrade, rolling upgrades. Yeah, because uh, you remember the synchronization between the operational databases and the which we have been facing in ODL and oh, we had with same thing with uh, Neutron at some point. All those, you don't expect anything to come up? So operational databases are different and whatever you maintain inventory is different. So you can take an inventory, have the schemas and all update and all that. 
But if you have a running platform or running infrastructure as a service uh, instance and you want to do an upgrade, don't you think it will have impact? Maybe we can talk offline, but I certainly want to follow up on that. Thank you.